Good evening. Welcome to Traders Corner. As always, I'm joined by Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi, Julieta. Garth, it's been a tough day at the office, uh, and there's nothing quite like the taste of humble pie, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to get to that um, because we'll be discussing last week's trade. But before we do, I know that you want to start off with the charts of the MSCI World Index, which is very interesting at the moment, um, especially with global concerns about what's happening to the stock market. Yes, very much so. Um, we often do take a, a big picture look at the markets when we begin this show, and we often look at the S&P 500 and our top 40 index, which are kind of both pretty relevant to us. To this week, I'm doing something slightly different, and I'm looking at this chart of the MSCI World Index. Now, this is a, an index uh, which tracks a, a, a basket of global stocks. It is very heavily weighted towards the U.S. because okay. the U.S. stock market carries a very he heavy weighting in terms of global equity markets. But nevertheless, it does include a lot of other global stocks from around the world as well. This is a weekly chart that we're looking at here, so, and, and it's a line graph, so it basically joins the, the closing price of each week with okay. a line. And it goes back about four years. Now, what's very, very interesting to note here is that we've got this huge, big head and shoulders pattern, which has been unfolding since mm -hmm. the start of 2014, actually. And you can see the head uh, and the shoulders there quite, quite clearly demarcated. And these things are very, very typically a topping out pattern. And particularly if you get a break below the neckline, as we've got over there, that validates that head and shoulders pattern. And that typically uh, then projects down to a, to a lower target. You'll normally take the height of that head structure at its tallest point and take that distance and project it down. Mm. Now, in this case, uh, it's I mean, that's projected. That's bad news, isn't it? Well, it is bad news. It, it is. I mean, and I, and I put this out here because I think we need to acknowledge this and respect it. You know, I, I've been worried that we're going into a bear market for some time. Mm. This chart for me confirms that. Now, it's not to say that we won't get rallies in the market and that we might not get some fairly powerful rallies, actually. But whilst we remain below the neckline of this head and shoulders pattern here, and in fact, whilst we remain below the top of the right shoulder of this head and shoulders pattern here, the pattern remains in force, mm. and that projects down to a lower target. And it would imply that we would expect a 25% pullback from the recent highs. The markets peaked in about April or May of last year, 2015, and we've been gradually moving lower since then. So you could argue that we're already nine months mm. into this bear market. Now, if you take it that a bear market typically lasts anywhere sort of from 18 months to two years, generally speaking, you could say that we're probably, in terms of time, we're maybe a third to maybe halfway through a bear market already, potentially, if history is any guide. And in terms of price on this MSCI World Index, you could argue we've almost done two-thirds of the way down to that head and shoulders target. Now, I'm not saying that we get to the head and shoulders target sure. and then it's all, all good times from there. I don't know. Those are minimum targets. But what I'm saying is that keep this chart in the back of your mind. It's, it's a bearish chart, and it tells us that the bull market that we've experienced for the last six, six and a half years is pretty much over. I think we have to accept mm -hmm. that fact and that 2016 is likely to be a very challenging year for markets. Although the good news on that is that if we are sort of two thirds of the way down um, towards the, the bottom of that head and shoulders f formation, the way it will play out, you know, that, that's, that's, I think, something to be somewhat positive about. Well, I guess so. But I think what you've also got to remember is that bear markets generally uh, get more volatile and more violent towards the end. So I, I think be careful because it, if, if this is right and if my sort of scenario is right, then I think the, the violent part of the bear market still lies ahead of us. Okay, well, on that note, it's been volatile and violent in the last week. And I suppose maybe there was a bit of violence <laughs> at the trading desk if phones, phones were being thrown around, etc. because you went long of the markets, yeah. um, but you were stopped out. So take, take us through uh, what was your week uh, for you, Garth. Yeah, I, I'm long since finished with thro throwing phones <laughs> around. I used to do that. I've calmed down a bit. <laughs> but, but it was frustrating last week. Um, this is a chart of the top 40 future. It's a one hour graph. So every candlestick pattern that you see here represents one hour's worth of trading action. Mm -hmm. And I came in here last week and I was all quite chipper about the fact that we had gone long on the top 40 and it looked to be working. What I'd identified at that stage was that we had this downtrend which had been in place since the 28th of December and the market had fallen quite dramatically over that time. We then made a, a significant gap up on mm -hmm. Tuesday morning last week and that gap wasn't filled. 
Usually if you get a, a, a opening gap up like that in, in the morning and then that gap fills, sometimes you could still see the market going lower. But if you get a gap up and that gap doesn't close, that usually is quite a positive sign and it usually results in fairly good follow through to the upside. Um, in addition to that, we also had a break of that, uh, that three week downtrend, which was encouraging. So I took all of this and I said, well, that's good news. And likelihood is that we're going to probably go up to, towards this 44,000 500, maybe 45,000 area. And I figured there was at least 2,000 points upside in the trade here. Um, so we went long of one March top 40 future at 43,000. Keep in mind, this is the Safex future. So it's 10 Rand per point exposure that we took here. My stop loss was 42,400, which at the time implied that we would take out those lows uh, be before the break of the downtrend occurred. And I figured it was looking good until Wednesday morning came along. And, and then, of course, it was a, a big dose of humble pie for me because you can see mm. this massive gap down. That, that was an 800-point gap down on, on the Wednesday morning. And there's really nothing you can do about that. That's, that happens overnight. The market opens at 8.30 the following morning. It gaps down. There's no trade in between there. It gapped below my stop loss. Yeah. Um, so in the end, I ended up closing that trade out at 42,250. So it meant there was slippage on the trade by an extra 150 points, yeah. i.e. an extra 1,500 Rand that I lost, which was unfortunate. And it meant that we ended up losing 7,535 Rand inclusive of costs. So it translates into around about 3% of our total equity. So it, it, it's frustrating, and, and it's particularly frustrating that it was our first trade of the year. Now, I always like to get the, the year off with a positive start. You almost get some sort of runs on the board, as it were, and then at least you feel like you're not going to go out for a duck. <laughs> but in this case, we've started the year with a losing trade, uh, and it's, we've lost more than yeah. what I wanted to, which is, which is irritating, but it's not the so end of the it. world either. The Proteas also had a losing trade, if you like to think of it uh, that way. Ba boy, they've had plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually even more frustrating, I suppose, for you to, co to consider what happened on Friday then, when there was this huge rally. But Garth, I mean, if you have to extrapolate lessons from the I events of last week, what, what would they be? Yeah, there's a couple of lessons to be learned here. I think the first lesson is that this position was actually too big. Um, I went long of the top 40 future, which is a 10 Rand per point future. Uh, I've got other options available to me. I could have used the IG Markets top 40 cash contract and they've got a two rand per point mm. futures go CFD contract. I could have used that and taken a smaller exposure. And, I, and in retrospect, that's what I should have done, particularly given that we're in a volatile market. I think it's prudent to trade slightly smaller positions in this type of volatile environment. That's the first thing. The second thing is to, to understand this market is going to be very unforgiving of mistakes at this stage. And, and, and the volatility is with us and it's probably going to remain with us for some time. And given that you've got that type of volatile environment, it probably pays you to rather scale back uh, positions, sizes. And, and the other thing talking about, I mean, we're not sort of punting IG, but I mean, you talk about the market opening and then gapping lower. It w is there any way to, to work against that or to mitigate that if you are able to maybe close out a trade? when other markets are open but the JSE is closed? Definitely, with the IG markets uh, cash top 40 CFD, that's a product that trades 24 hours a day. Okay. Now this top 40 future that I traded here, tra it trades between 8.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. It's closed for the other hours of the day. And um, w whereas if I traded it via the IG markets top 40 cash, that product actually trades on an algorithm throughout the night. It mm -hmm. tracks the S&P 500, it then tracks the Asian markets in the morning. So you then do have an opportunity to get out if I needed to do that at, at one o'clock in the morning, for example, I could have done it. Whereas using this futures contract, I unfortunately had, my hands were tied until 8.30 in the morning when the market opened and we had this massive mm -hmm. gap to the downside. And I'm sure we're gonna be seeing more gaps to the upside and to the downside, so maybe that's something to bear in mind. Yeah. Okay, Garth, so you've lost money on that, but you had another trade last week, which was a short position on cash build, and that seems to be working out. It is working out, yeah. We, we identified this trade on cash build last week. What I'd identified was that the stock had broken below this big lateral area of support at about 295 Rand. That goes back about six months or so. So the breakdown below that lateral support here is actually quite significant. And um, it, it effectively leaves six or seven months worth of stale bulls all underwater over here. Now, um, my feeling is that that is a, is, a, is a very important technical break and it points to further downside for this share price. It points down to about 230 Rand. Mm -hmm. um, so on the breakdown, we then saw the share price rally back up to retest that resistance point 
a prior support like that then becomes resistance on a retest and you saw the share price reversing down from that level so i went short at 290 rand and 45 cents my stop loss is very wide here it's 320 rand and i'm looking to hold this for quite a while yeah. i think um, right now my sense is that the share price is busy consolidating into a bit of a triangle type of structure and if we take out the bottom of that triangle, that's at about 266 Rand, then it points down towards our lower target, which is it's around about 235 Rand. So I'm quite content to sit short with this cash build position for the time being. Okay. You talk about lateral support, and that's something that you want to introduce this evening, um, looking at a couple of other um, shares, which would introduce um, the share that you've got your eye on, that Sassel. Yep. And you know you want to look at shop price and net care. Yes, that's right. Uh, this is a very interesting concept, which I want to hone in on here and, and basically build it up to a, a, an analysis of Sassel. Um, it, it, we, we're dealing with shares that form a lateral support. In other words, you know, a share bounces, comes back down, bounces, tests the same support over and over and over again. But each time it bounces, it makes a lower high. So to illustrate the concept here, have a look at this chart of ShopRite. This was the trading action throughout 2015. Now what you can see is we've got this big area of lateral support here. Notice how all those lows line up beautifully at about, two, uh, about 152 Rand a share. But each time the share price bounced, it made a lower high. Now what this is telling you is that when the share price goes down, the buyers are there to pick up the stock, but they're not strong enough to push it up and make new highs. The sellers come in at a lower level every time. And if you have to weigh up the, 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 the power between the buyers and sellers, you would say to yourself, the sellers in fact are exhibiting slightly stronger force here because the buyers can't push that price up to new highs every time. Mm. And when that whole thing eventually resolves itself, the likelihood is that it's probably going to break to wherever the weakest side is. And that means, in this case, it's going to resolve to the downside. Yeah. And, and similarly with Netcare. Yeah, well, you can see with Shop right there, it broke below that support eventually. And it's, it's been that now, that 150 Rand sort of area is now a massive area of resistance. And the share price has been weaker ever since. Um, have a look at Netcare. Very, very thing. similar scenario here. You've got this lateral support at 36 Rand over here. The, the, the support was tested multiple times. But again, you had lower highs on each successive rally. And eventually, it was inevitable that when that pattern resolved itself, it was going to resolve itself to the downside. And on, on traderscorner.co.za, we were calling for shorts on the stock last year at around about 40 Rand because we felt it was likely to eventually resolve mm -hmm. to the downside, which, which is what it's done. So no. this sort of tees up a share that you want to look at, which is Sassel. Yeah, I want to look at Sassel now because this is quite, uh, quite relevant in terms of the concept that we've been talking about with this lateral support area, but the lower highs on each case. Now here you can see Sassel basically going back 18 months, but particularly notice throughout 2015, we've had this lateral area of support mm. at 360 Rand that's been tested several times. Uh, but again, Look at the rallies. The rallies have not been strong. Each time the share price has rallied, it's rallied to a lower high. I also know, and I'm sure many viewers sitting out there watching this show will know, Sassel is one of those shares that people have loved to accumulate over the last year because they expect that it's going to recover and the oil price is going to recover and everything's going to be wonderful. We now sit with the risk that if this share price were to break below 360 Rand, in other words, that lateral support level, then I think it could be quite violent because then you're going to see a long period of stale bulls, all of a sudden, all of them are now losing mm. money when it gets below 360. And the propensity will then be for all of them to probably want to sell and exit that, that trade without you know, losing as little money as possible. So my sense is that we need to watch Sassel here because the rallies are weak and the likelihood is that we can probably put a short position in here in the, in the next week or two, looking for that 360 Rand support to eventually break. And I think when it does break, it's probably going to break in quite spectacular mm. fashion. And we could see this share moving down to 320 quite mm. quickly. Okay, so that's a potential short trade. Yeah. Garth, I haven't left you too much time at all to have a look, quick look at what's happened to the portfolio and then your next course. Yeah, well, probably a good thing because <laughs> it's not looking good. Um, look, we're down 2.5% for the year today. It's not the end of the world. You know, the nice thing is we've still got 97.5% of our money left so there's always an upshot to that exactly there you can see the loss we took on the top 40 and then profit uh, mark to market profit that we've got on cash build at the moment so no new trades for this week but we are watching Sassel mm -hmm. and then in terms of courses uh, I've got a high probability trading course coming up this Saturday in Johannesburg there's still space available keep in mind this is a high probability trading course that I'm focusing on bear market yeah. trading strategies and I'm in Cape Town on the 5th of March. And then my colleague Andrew Todd is running a top 40 trading course in Johannesburg on the 6th of February. 
So if you'd like any details on any of these courses, please email me on goth at traderscorner.co.za and I'll send you all the details. Great, Goth, we'll leave it there. Thanks as always for joining us. Garth McKenzie is founder and editor of Traders Corner.